Hello everyone and welcome to live coverage of the launch of the Elegant Design Bureau's Sajita rocket carrying its first commercial payload, the Matic Lunar Probe designed and built by greedy Ordovician Velociraptors, an organization headed by eccentric strut billionaire and Twitch streamer Thylord Root. The flight director has given us the go for launch and the clock has resumed after the planned hold at T-4 minutes. Matic stands for My Aunt Dorothy is Chicken-like. When asked why he decided to name this probe that, Thylod Root pointed out that Elon Musk named his drone ships things like Of Course I Still Love You, and he was simply following in that naming trend, though we are uncertain what this name might be a reference to. The upper stage of the Sujita rocket will bring the probe to orbit, and then, about half an hour into the mission, conduct a transfer burn to the moon. After the transfer burn is complete, the broadcast will end, the probe will separate from the stage sometime after the completion of the burn once systems have been checked out, and will use its capture stage to do two correction burns, the first of which will actually put it on a lunar encounter, and then the second one to correct inclination. Uh, we will have an update about the status of this mission in six days, after which it is expected to be in orbit around the moon. The EDB received the Matic probe at its clean room facilities in Southern California, where it arrived in two pieces, the lunar capture stage and the probe in a series of fairings. The EDB was instructed not to remove the fairings prior to launch, but negotiated a way to check out the payload to ensure launch success and assuage concerns from the defense community about Thylord Root's intentions. The probe's nature is not secret per se, but greedy Ordovician Velociraptors is extraordinarily concerned about saboteurs. The mission modules were sufficiently checked out and assembled by the EDB's crack team of Kerbals, the best engineers willing to work for Steam gift cards. They are also willing to accept chances to drive our camera truck out to the pad as payment, which is convenient financially, but the sight of Kerbals driving tends to give the humans at the Cape severe anxiety. Dollar Root from greedy Ordovician Velociraptors was watching this drive up to the pad intently to ensure that the Kerbals didn't risk his payload. The Kerbals did overturn the truck a few times, but it's designed for that, and they were able to get it upright safely with no harm done. The Sajita rocket is a methane-burning rocket carrying liquid methane and oxygen in both stages. Propellant loading is complete at this point. The rocket is roughly 308 tons without its payload, and the payload is 4.3 tons. The Matic probe's mass in low lunar orbit is expected to be around 2.7 tons. Coming up on T-1 minute, T-1 minute and counting, this is the launch of the Matic probe on the Sajita rocket. Since its destination is the moon, Matic is necessarily a small probe, and therefore was easily transported by truck to Cape Canaveral. Once there, it was mated with the Sajita rocket in the vertical assembly building and waited for a clear spot in the range schedule between the first launch of SpaceX's Starlink satellite constellation on Falcon 9, and the first launch of SpaceX's Starlink satellite constellation after they scrubbed the first two attempts. T-30 seconds. SpaceX has the range tomorrow, so the EDB is looking to get this launch off today with an uncertain date for the next available attempt. The weather here at the Cape is excellent, and we are now proceeding smoothly to a launch at 8.30 p.m. local time here on the East Coast. T-10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, ignition sequence start, 2, one, and launch. And we have a launch of the Sujita rocket carrying the Matic probe to low lunar orbit. The first lunar mission for the Sujita rocket. And its first commercial mission. The rocket is one kilometer in altitude, and we are 20 seconds into this sunset launch here in Florida. Thirty seconds into the launch, we're trying to get the onboard cameras, and there we have the onboard view here. Passing through the transonic region, five kilometers, six kilometers in altitude. Forty-five seconds into the launch. Passing through the region of maximum dynamic pressure. Four hundred meters per second, ten kilometers in altitude. And we are one minute into the launch, trajectory looks nominal, telemetry is coming in fine, and chamber pressures are nominal. 
the rocket is past Mach 2. It is at 18 kilometers in altitude at 75 seconds. At this point, EDB Launch Services wishes to note that there are many aspects of this mission which concern or confuse EDB leadership. However, the EDB respects the wishes of client companies once a payload is accepted insofar as that is possible. If you can pay the struts, the rocket is yours. The Sujita is currently 30 kilometers downrange. It is at 1,200 meters per second ground speed, 36 kilometers in altitude, and we are 1 minute and 45 seconds into the launch. We have been notified that Greedy Ordovician Velociraptors is already preparing a second payload, and so we can look forward to that. However, it is likely that the next launch for the EDB will be more station components, Perhaps a solar truss or a tug, both payloads have been prepared already. The EDB is hoping to outright buy a Bigelow BA-330 expandable habitat if it can get enough contracts. And there are already signs that another company might be interested in adding to our manifest, though we can't make a disclosure about that yet. The rocket is currently at 71 kilometers in altitude, 2,120 meters per second in velocity, 120 kilometers downrange, and we are past two and a half minutes into the launch. We're getting ready for the end of the first stage, which should occur shortly after three minutes into the launch. 2,400 meters per second. Trajectory is looking nominal, chamber pressures are fine as the stage comes to a close here and we are getting good telemetry from the rocket we're at three minutes 98 kilometers in altitude the actual time for miko main engine cutoff depends on how the engines throttled during the stage to limit dynamic pressure And we have Miko at 108 kilometers in altitude, 3,030 meters per second, and the second stage is a go. We're at three and a half minutes into the launch, and we're trying to reacquire the onboard cameras. Uh, couldn't do that just yet, but we do have payload fairing separation confirmation at 124 kilometers in altitude, 3,400 meters per second. The rocket is currently more than 350 kilometers downrange. We do expect further payload fairing separations from the payload as it does have multiple fairings over the actual probe. We should be getting those starting at 5 minutes and 30 seconds into the launch. We're currently at 4 minutes 10 seconds, 144 kilometers in altitude, 4,000 meters per second. Of course, the presence of multiple sets of payload fairings does entail additional risk, as each payload fairing separation can go awry. Of course, in this case, that would not be a failure of the launch vehicle, but we are planning to pay close attention to that just as the onboard cameras drop off. But it is critical that all the payload fairings separate cleanly before the solar panels on the probe extend and that is scheduled to occur 7 minutes and 20 seconds into the launch. We are 5 minutes into the launch at 171 kilometers in altitude, 5,400 meters per second, and the rocket is roughly 750 kilometers downrange. Supplementary payload fairing separation number one is in 10 seconds. And the first set of supplementary payload fairings have separated as expected. The next set should separate in about 15 seconds. We've got the onboard camera now. Second set of supplementary payload fairings have separated cleanly. We're at 184 kilometers in altitude, 
Nearing orbit 6,700 meters per second, the upper stage has throttled down. Expecting another set of payload fairings. Okay, and yes, there's the set at 6 minutes and 30 seconds. They are off. We have second stage engine shutdown. And we're awaiting the final payload fairing separation. And we've temporarily lost the onboard camera. The payload fairing should have separated, but we haven't gotten that confirmation yet. Uh, we are attempting to manually jettison the payload fairing separation because we are coming up on the solar panel deployment. And the signal has been sent. And we have confirmation that the payload fairings have separated. And that is the final set. And we're waiting for confirmation of solar panel and antenna deployment on the Matic probe. We've got onboard camera now. And we have antenna deployment, uh, judging from the camera. That is a bit delayed from what we expected. And we do have confirmation of solar panel deployment as well. Right now, the probe and the upper stage are in their coast phase to the translunar injection point, which should be at roughly T plus 31 minutes. We are currently eight minutes into the launch, and so there will be a delay of 23 minutes as the probe coasts. We'll remain with you during that time, and we will have music playing while the simulated view appears, and we will resume commentary about a minute before the planned lunar injection burn.
Okay, we are back, and the Matic probe with the Sagitta upper stage is currently over southern Africa, and we are expected to get the translunar injection burn any time now uh, in roughly 45 seconds. The expected burn time at full throttle would have been 30 seconds. However, the upper stage engine, the ED4V, will throttle down, and so the burn time will be somewhat longer than that. We show the RCS preparing to settle the fuel down. Uh, confirmed ullage. And we have ignition of the ED-4V on the translunar injection burn. The planned burn will add approximately 2,900 meters per second to the velocity of the probe, and that's about 6,500 miles an hour. The probe will require approximately 200 meters per second more in order to actually reach the moon, and it will handle that on its own sometime after separation from the Sagitta upper stage. We will not be carrying that live. The vehicle is now over 9,000 meters per second. Telemetry and chamber pressure look nominal. Now over 10,000 meters per second, 22,400 miles an hour. And we have confirmation of ED-4V engine shutdown. We are 33 minutes into the mission of the Matic probe to the moon. And with this, we'll end our broadcast. We hope you enjoyed this presentation of the launch of the Matic probe on the Sagitta rocket. We hope you will join us for further launches in the future. And we'll see you next time.